Hi, I'm Craig Blackstone from The Independent Voice and I'm here on the streets of Manchester with Paul Wagner, the guitarist and founding member of Between the Buried and Me. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? Great. I'm alright, thanks. Yeah. All um, right. We're ready for the show. Definitely very excited to see you guys going. We're like, ready to play. Yeah. Excellent. Um, have you been in Manchester before? We have. We yeah. usually play over at the, uh, maybe the Academy. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So this is the first time at, at this particular venue. Okay. Great. So it's tree for you. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> this is a much cooler area. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, I think so. Um, right, so you are touring for Coma Ecliptic, the release of your most recent studio album. Yes. How's the tour been going so far? So far, so good. We've only played, uh, well, we did a full tour in the U.S., yeah. which went very well with right. uh, Animals as Leaders and the Contortionist. Mm -hmm. So that was like a six-week tour, which was great. And then, uh, and then we got over here a few days ago, so we played, uh, we just played a couple shows. Uh, last night we were in London, and um, tonight we're in uh, Manchester, obviously, so, so far so good. Yeah, last night in London was great, and we expect tonight in Manchester to be a lot of fun as well. But when you're touring, do you find there's a big difference in the way crowds react and respond between different countries? Um, we generally get a pretty good response. I mean, we there's more people at the shows in the States. Yeah. But when we come over here, um, it's, it's less people. The shows are much smaller for us, but um, the reaction seems to be pretty good. Yeah. It seems to be, you know, people seem to like, like what we're doing, I guess. Yeah, Otherwise, right. I guess we wouldn't, wouldn't yeah. come back over this. But uh, yeah, so far it's been, it's been a really good positive response. We've played a couple new songs on this run uh, yeah. for the new album. People seem to be pretty receptive to it. And some seem to have heard, heard the songs, which means maybe the new album uh, is being listened to. Yeah, well, the album um, is quite complex, and the whole thing flows together as one musical piece on its own. Is that something you were aiming to do, or did it just flow that way? Uh, we always try to, or with the past couple of releases, we've tried to write sort of conceptual pieces, uh, musically and lyrically. So, yeah, I think it, it's designed to have have a flow to it yeah. uh, from start to finish. Um, we like albums that are that are kind of created as a, as a one long listening experience. Yep. And so that's what we tried to do with Coming Ecliptic. It's meant to be heard uh, from start to finish. I mean, I think the songs kind of stand on their own as well, but um, the real value, I think, is that as an album, it, it's, it's an album. You know, yeah. it's, a, it's 70 minutes of, of music that, that you can kind of listen to in one, one sitting. Yeah. Great. Um, you had a making of DVD made about it, which was released with the pre-order of the album. You know, not everybody will have been lucky enough to pick that up. Would you be able to give just a very brief overview to the process that went into creating the album? Um, well, you know, uh, the, the behind the scenes thing was just really kind of a look into, um, or sort of the, sort of takes the uh, mystique oh of creating, yeah. <laughs> creating a, creating an album. A lot of it is just us, the five of us, you know, transporting equipment to a studio and, yeah. and putting it in there and plugging it in and, and dilly-dallying with, with sounds and stuff like that until yeah. we come across some stuff that we like. It's a very hands-on experience, you know, there's no real, like, magic button that you push to record an album, you know. You go in there with your instruments and, and the songs that you've written and, and, you, uh, and you try to try to get the best tones that you possibly can. Uh, for us, we went to a, a studio for the drums, um, a really nice, like, uh, acoustically advanced uh, studio sound room. Yeah, uh, drum yeah. sounds, yeah, yeah, state of the art, and, and just had good acoustics for the drums. Um, so we did that for drums, and then um, we went into uh, the basement studios, which is uh, owned by Jamie Key, who's our longtime collaborator. Uh, producer, and so we recorded guitars and vocals and all that stuff there. And um, yeah, it's just really, um, it's just kind of the, the making of is more just kind of like a, a little bit of an insight into the day-to-day -day process of recording an album. Yeah. And it's it's really nothing, there's no real 
mystique to it, you know, you should go in there and report your stuff and hope for the best. <laughs> Okay. Um, well, you guys have recently posted that you're part of the Ten Bands One Cause campaign, uh, including Primus as well. Um, is there anything you can tell us about that? I don't know anything about you don't that. Know? That is news to me. It's great. Fantastic. That sounded it like, <laughs> I was like, what you're saying? Wow. Right? <laughs> okay, well then we'll have to research that and have a look into it. <laughs> no, it's no, possible. No. It could be something our management... Um, well, there you go. You've got to have been doing for me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's possible. Okay. Uh, right then. Um, you and um, a number of your band, I believe, are vegans, is that correct? That and is correct. you personally follow the straight edge lifestyle as well, don't you? I do, yeah, although, um, you know, now that I'm older, I'm 36 now, so yeah. being straight edge, it's not like I'm a hard carrying yeah. member of the movement, but I've always been, you know, I've always thought that you know, living life uh, free from, you know, mind-altering substances is, for me, is, is the best route to take. Uh, yeah. I've seen firsthand, uh, you know, even family members and stuff struggle with uh, addiction and, yeah. and stuff like that. So for me, it's just I enjoy life as it is, uh, clarity of mind. And so for me, it's uh, it's it's what's right for me. So again, I don't really you know, uh, go around advertising it, but uh, yeah, I don't drink, I don't smoke, I just don't find any of that stuff. I'm not attracted to that. It doesn't sound fun to me or anything, so yeah. I just don't do it. <laughs> Great. But, and then, you know, veganism is a more, much more probably active, uh, something I'm, I'm actually more into. You know, I think yeah. it, it does have such uh, such a broad impact on uh, animal life, plant life, and just the health of the earth in general. So I'm much more probably passionate about it. Do you find those themes and the ethos and principles behind that come through into the music writing at all, or is it something? Different? That's a good question. I don't know. I mean, probably a little bit. I yeah. mean, Tommy's vegan as well. Um, a lot of our, even though we write kind of sort of fictional um, stories in, in the music, um, with a lot of abstract ideas and, and sort of stream of conscious lyricism, I think there is oftentimes a message. Um, with, with the music, and it might not be directly correlated to veganism, but I think in a lot of ways it, it's correlated to humanity being kind of a, a destructive species. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, and, and I think it does kind of come through in, in a way. You know, we are all pretty, um, if nothing else, I think we're aware of our, our flaws as yeah. a species, and so we do kind of, in a, in a roundabout way, I think we write about that kind of stuff. Right. And you also mentioned that you write these ideas of stories. You said that the latest album has a kind of David Lynchish feel to it. Are you a big Lynch fan? Yourself? Yeah, Tom, uh, well, I mean, Tommy wrote most of the lyrics. He's, he's a Lynch fan. I'm a Lynch fan. Uh, yeah. Our bass player Dan is, is a Lynch fan. So, yeah, I think some of it is a lot, you know, a lot of the imagery that is in, in David Lynch movies and stuff is, is so haunting and. Yeah. Sometimes you might not know what it means, what the metaphor is necessarily, but it's just that imagery just sticks with you. And so, yeah, we we kind of wanted to create something like that. It kind of almost had this sort of uh, uh, David Lynch or Twilight Zone sort of vibe to it. And, and I think Tom did a pretty good job with that. So, so when I read the lyrics, I definitely like, up some pretty uh, dark images. Yeah, sure. Great. Um, are you excited for the YouTube big stuff? I am, but I'm a little apprehensive. You never know how yeah, you know yeah. that kind of stuff goes. But I, I hope it's cherished. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, I think it it has potential to be awesome. It also has the potential to maybe not be awesome. So yeah. we'll see. We'll see what happens. But yeah, we're you know I love man. I think Mulholland Drive is one of my yeah. favorite Lynch works. And so I just yeah, we're big fans of his. But yeah, I think we're all probably a little apprehensive. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Fair enough. Okay, well, last of all, really, I was going to ask you, prompted you to start playing in the first place? Music in general. Playing music? That's, man, that's a good question. I don't, I don't know. When I was younger, probably in my early to mid-teens, I just, I guess I had this sort of, I hit a crossroads in my life where I just, some, something about music just spoke to me in a way that it probably had never done before. And I became almost obsessed with it, uh, yeah. passionate to the degree of almost obsession. You know? um, I just, I love, I love the sound of guitar. I love, you know, I was a kind of a child of the 90s. So I, uh, when I got into music, the 
early 90s grunge alternative things happening. And I just love that sound. It just really spoke to me. It still does, you know, when I listen to old stuff like that. I mean, Alice in Chains, Nirvana, whatever, it, it still it holds up for me, you know, and it still gives me that feeling. It's hard to describe the feeling, but yeah, music was always just, um, from that point on, it just it hit me in a way that it never had before. And so I just decided to pursue it, you know. I, got a guitar, learned how to play a couple of riffs, and took some lessons, and grew from there. You know, but that, of course, that was a long time ago, and uh, it's gotten me here, so I guess it's not it's not all bad, but uh, the decision, yeah, I, mean, I guess so, <laughs> but it, it's fun, and we enjoy it, and it is a rare opportunity to be able to, to pursue a, a dream like music, and to do it, you know, play all over the world for people who, who like what you do, so... Um, I'm glad I stuck with it, just for that reason, if nothing else. Yeah, I'm sure all your fans are glad as well. Yeah, I so. <laughs> so. So it's probably a little bit early to ask this, but what's next for you guys after the end of the tour? Well, I mean, we're always thinking about what's around the corner. I mean, obviously we're going to do some more touring on this album for, for the foreseeable future, but um, we're always, we always have that itch to, to write a new record. You know, we don't necessarily have concrete ideas right now, but I think we're all all looking forward to the next yeah. writing session. So um, we'll tour on this album for however long it takes. You know, I guess the booking agents and managers will decide that, and then it'll be time to, to get back to it and start writing some more uh, writing some more tunes. Great, right. and uh, we'll just keep doing it until they tell us we can't do it anymore. <laughs> Great. Well, we're definitely looking forward to that. Certainly to the show today. So I think we've taken up enough of your time. Thank you very much for making the time to come and do this. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Appreciate Thank it. You.